Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be checking out Christian Okoye's journey from Nigeria to becoming an NFL legend. And uh, I've already checked out Christian Okoye already, one of my earlier videos. And um, someone told me to check out this video, and I, I actually forgot about it, to be honest with you. So I'm going to be checking it out today. Um, as a Nigerian, it's always very good to see people that, you know, uh, left this country to find look for a better life and actually succeeded at doing it. So um everybody knows that this country is a shit hole and any chance you get to leave the country to try and make your your generation's life to be a bit better than what it could be here it's always admirable to me so let's get right into it the odds of making it to the nfl are beyond slim of over 1 million high school football players in 2013 only 7% of them went on to play in college. Wow. And just 1% of those guys went on to make it to the NFL. Damn. Doing the math, that meant that 0. 0.00... This percentage is actually, it's actually probably even worse for the NBA. Because NFL, I think NFL has over 30 players, right, in the team. NBA, what, 12, 15 players. There's really no room. And even if there is a room, you're probably going to be a bench player. It's crazy. 0.75% of those high school players would eventually be selected into the NFL. Zero In other words, zero, 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 if zero, you're five. aspiring to make it to five, the league, ten. good luck. Now, <laughs> what if the first time you had ever heard about football was when you were 21 years old? What? You probably would have a better chance of winning the mega lottery. Matter of fact, the only way you were making it to the league at that point is if you won the genetic lottery. Like Which this guy. Okoye. Yeah. This is Christian Okoye. In 1983, he moved to the U.S. at the age of 21 and had never even heard about American football. Three years later, he had become the NFL's most intriguing prospect after leading the nation in yards per game as a 260-pound running back. Woo! <laughs> He, de he definitely won that genetic lottery, definitely. So, how did things get to this point? How does a guy who's never even heard about football become the game's biggest story in a matter of a few years? Well, let's break it down from the beginning of Christian Okoye's story. Growing up, Christian Okoye excelled at many sports, playing things such as volleyball, soccer, and handball. But by the age of 17, he began to put his focus in his best sport at the time, track and field. He did everything, but his most successful event was the discus. It had become apparent to Christian by the end of high school that he had a serious chance of making it to the Olympics. To pursue his goal while also getting an education, Okoye decided to move to America at the age of 21, landing at Azusa Pacific, which is an NAIA school in California. His freshman year in track was a dominant one. Okoye was the national champion in the discus, which wow. put him in striking distance of making the Olympics the following year. However, despite having the qualifications to make it in the discus, the Nigerian national team did not select him onto their Olympic roster. Okoye was crushed by this, and after that, he decided to pursue other... And I can tell you why that could have been politics. Probably politics. Someone could say, oh, you were not here. You are in the US. Why why would it why would it give you the opportunity instead of someone that is in Nigeria? So unfortunately, I can't say that for a fact, but I'm, I could bet that this guy was better than the the people that pre represented Nigeria at the time. And I, I I can bet my life savings on that. But uh I don't even have any life savings, so it doesn't really matter. But it just shows you how things could be in my country. Politics, politics, politics their outlets and that's when he stumbled upon football the very first game that he attended he found it rather boring but Okoye recognized that given his athletic ability he could possibly be great at the sport so he decided to go try out for Azusa Pacific's football team when the coach asked him what position he would play Okoye didn't even know the names of positions <laughs> he told the coach that he saw the Raiders on TV one day and wanted to do whatever that guy was doing and that's how Christian Okoye became a running back. Out of curiosity, the coach set up a 40-yard dash to see how fast this big dude was. His first time that he ran for me in the 40 was 438. Considering Okoye was 6'1", 260 at the time, this yeah. was astounding. 
Having the strength of a national champion thrower with this kind of speed was, well, that's closing in on LeBron Insane. level athleticism. Insane. However, at first, Okoye wasn't a huge fan of playing football. Did you start to like it or did you just simply become better? Well, actually, I didn't like it, but I was doing better. He considered quitting multiple times, but teammates talked Okoye into staying and he developed into a total beast. Over the span of three seasons, Okoye led the entire nation in yards per game. I don't know if you understand how insane that is. He would have had to learn all the basic fundamentals, such as how a snap count worked, what running a play meant, what a run play was compared to a pass play, how to take a handoff, how to block, where to line up over many different formations, then from all those different formations, where to go when the ball was snapped on many variations of plays. In practice, Damn. one of his teammates would hold up an arrow made out of cardboard to help show him which way he was supposed to be going on a given play. And this is all the basics of pre-snap only. Post-snap concepts like reading blocks and taking on defenders seemed to come natural to Okoye, even though he didn't like hitting at first. Now, he did play at a small school in a lower division, so he was relatively unknown during his time at Azusa and he didn't receive any invites to postseason college all-star games. But luckily, one of the top running backs dropped out of the Senior Bowl, giving Okoye the chance to compete. Four touchdowns later, Christian Okoye had officially become the biggest scouting phenomenon of 1987. Just imagine the scouting debates going on at the time. Man, on one hand, this dude didn't play a down of organized football till he was 23 years old. That's the age of many rookies in the NFL. He still only had a basic understanding of how the game worked. But Seriously, this guy's story is so insane. It's so insane. And so, some part of me is making me feel like NFL is not that hard to make to make it. Like, as long as you have this godlike athleticism, you have this godlike genetics, you are fine. Other other sports require you to have a lot of skill. Like soccer, <laughs> you in fact, the only part that your genetic ability may help you is maybe as a defender, probably, or a defensive midfielder, two positions that don't really give you a lot of glamour, you know. Places like striker, winger, midfielder, you need lots of skill. Like, you can't just wake up from nowhere and start playing it and become great enough to make it to the professional level or to the top. There's no way. There's just no way. You need some, you need lots of skill. The same way how Joel Embiid was able to just start playing basketball at the age of what, 17, 18, and he was already great enough to be a, a, first, a first overall pick, even not for his injuries. I mean, it just seems like these American sports are so easy as long as you have godlike genetic gifts. You are, you are fine. But in soccer, your genetic gifts don't. Like they say, maybe God gave you f football gifts, but in terms of physicality, physicality, in terms of strength, speed, things like that, uh, you need to like there are a lot of players that have this strength and speed, but they, but but they can't play, they can't play soccer. Like you have the likes of uh, most of you won't know any of these players, but there are players like that that have godlike genetics, but they play like headless chickens. They don't have any sense. It's the same thing. So the fact that people can just come into these American sports just because they have some godlike genetics and they can just come and become one of the best. It's crazy. On the other hand, here's what kind of athletic freak Okoye was. He was a seven-time national champion thrower, with his best discus throw ranking out among the top in the world. He was a near 24-foot long jumper, had a supposed 4.3840, led the nation in yards in his third year of playing football, this and guy's, his lifting numbers smart. were off the charts. Christian Okoye had the greatest physical potential of anyone in the 87 class, and the Kansas City Chiefs knew it. In that year's draft, they made the choice to take him with their second round pick. Let's just Mad. say they hit okay, a home run with this round. selection. Okay, second round. Christian! Yeah. If it's not in, we're going to go 25 lead. Okay. Get down, get your pads down, and make a hole if there isn't one. All right, make a hole. Okoye on second and three, and Okoye 
Ray pulls his way, leaving bodies in his way. Why shoot when you can go straight ahead? <laughs> Ripping his way through a couple of their attackers. They give it to Okoye going laterally, and he's in. By Christian Okoye's third season, he was on top of the NFL, leading the entire league in rushing in 1989 on his way to achieving All-Pro honors. He had become known as the Nigerian Nightmare, and he really was a nightmare to opposing defenders. Apparently before games, Okoye would run down the opponent's sidelines just to show off his size. Over the course of games, he would often bulldoze his way to three and four yard runs, slowly breaking the will of defenses from the constant hitting. He was about the last guy you'd want to have to try and hit 30 times a game. Of the other top 10 backs from the 1989 season, Roger Craig Paris was Santos. the closest to Okoye's weight, and he was wow. more than 30 pounds smaller than him. And what was hilarious about Okoye's success to this point was how much he still didn't know about football. In his fourth season, which was after he led the league in rushing, he asked a coach in a team meeting, hey, what's the difference between a 3-4 and a 4-3 defense? These are the two most common defensive fronts in all of football. But because of Okoye's willingness to be coachable and his desire to be great alongside his talent, he was able to adapt quickly to the game and become not only a star, but also a legend. Damn. In my last video, I discussed the history of the iconic neck pad and Christian Okoye's role in that. He became the player to popularize the jersey over the neck roll look. It made a big man look like a mountain. He was instantly a fan favorite in Kansas City as soon as he stepped onto the field, and he was a hero to his home country, Nigeria. Okoye, along with Hakeem Olajuwon, were both born in Nigeria around the same time and had become stars in popular American sports in the same era. This was a- I mean, to be fair, um, Okoye is on the same level with uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, not in terms of the skill, I can't really judge that, but in terms of people knowing him in Nigeria, I didn't know of Christian Okoye until I started this channel. So, but Hakim, even before I started basketball, even before I even before even before Kobe introduced me to basketball, I already used to hear about Michael Jordan. I used to hear about Shaquille O'Neal. I used to hear about Kobe Bryant. I used to hear about Hakim Olajuwon. I used to hear about um, Allen Iverson. Uh, which other player did I used to hear about that time? Um, I didn't even say about Ma Magic Johnson before I started. Before I started the NBA, I didn't know about. I didn't know about those three. Those players I mentioned: Jordan, Hakeem, Kobe, Shaq. Um, who else did I ever mention? There? Iverson. Those players I just mentioned were the guys that I knew. In and I, I am not trying to use myself as the only reference here. But to be to be fair, most people in this my country have enough problems to even know about all these people. But Hakim is definitely more popular than um, Christian Okoye. Way, way more popular. And I guess it's because basketball is more of, like, Nigerians play basketball, you know, compared to NFL that Nigerians don't play. So, understandably. A pretty big deal to their home country. Not only was Okoye the first Nigerian-born NFL player, but he was also the first African-born player. Also, Christian Okoye had become a legend in another realm video games. Super Tecmo Bowl was released in 1991, and it quickly became the most popular sports game that had ever been produced. Of the 12 teams that you could play with, nobody wanted to go against the Chiefs, since Okoye was impossible to stop. He, alongside Raiders running back Bo Jackson, were pretty much off limits in many households. Now, Okoye's reputation as a bruising back had become so enormous that by 1990, there was one particular play that became one of the NFL's all-time greatest moments. Hmm, what could that be? Say, let's rock! Showtime, baby, showtime in the Maha City! I was standing maybe one man away when he made a big hit on a, on a car yet, and just did this. <laughs> Two days before I was born, that is weird. <laughs> sound of that hit fires you up. For those of you who currently play or have played football, did your dad ever reference one moment or one play to teach you something or to hype you up? This play I'm about to reference was the one my dad always talked about. Steve Atwater was a safety who weighed roughly 30 to 40 pounds less than Okoye, 
And not only did he take on this behemoth of a running back, but he lit him up. And one of the playoffs in his career, and a boy really gets banged back at the Damn. 14. And who else could do Whoa. that but Atwater? You know, Dan and Damn. I talked about this down on the field earlier. Is that somewhere what? tonight there's going to be one of the great collisions what? when Atwater, who hits like oh. a tank, is going to collide with well, I Christian Okoye. It was such a significant moment that this is both of these dudes' most famous play. I bet in tackling <laughs> drills all across America, this hit has been referenced at least 50% of the time. But I think this hit was such a big deal because of how amazing Okoye had been to that point. He had shoot up and spit out defenders in his path for years. Mm. He truly mm. was the most intimidating offensive player to go up against for a brief time. After the 1992 season, Okoye decided that he was done with playing football. In six NFL seasons, Christian Okoye managed to become a two-time Pro Bowler, hitting 1,000 yards in both of those seasons, and he totaled 40 career touchdowns. Since his NFL career has been over, he's been nothing but a role model to his community, a guy who always has a smile on his face and is willing to help others. The man is truly rare in every sense of the word. Now, in wrapping up his time in the NFL, fans of the 80s got to witness a man with an incredible gift a dude who decided to pick up American football at 23 years old. Nice and smart, within four man. years, nice he smart. was busting runs against NFL defenses like this. I mean, the fact that I played on the six seasons shows that I didn't really love the game like that. Very, very clear. He didn't really love the game. He just looked at it like, dude, I'm actually good at this shit. Let me, let me just play it. I'm actually good at this. Let me just play it. What do I stand to lose? So I guess that is what happened here because six seasons, surely if surely when it, it was not um, wrecked by injuries, that is really, really surprising. It's crazy to think that the NFL's rushing leader in 1989 may have never played football at all, if only the Nigerian national team had selected him to their 84 Olympic roster. At the time, it was unfortunate, but turns out it was a blessing yeah. in disguise. In disguise. And Akoya gets a big play, busting it wide open. Look at the speed of this huge man, Woo! 255 pounds. And Akoya is all the way down inside the 35-yard line. Hand off Akoya. He's past the 10. He's past the 5. He shuts his touchdown. Unbelievable. An incredible run by the Nigerian Nightmare. Wow, nice, 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 nice. Like and like I said during the, the video, maybe these American sports are that hard to learn. If only you are you have if only you won a genetic lottery, you are fine. You can play any of these sports. NFL, basketball, you can play any of these sports. So to be honest with you, seriously. Okay, basketball may, may be a bit harder. Actually, not not really. If you are if you are seven feet and athletic as fuck, you have some kind of genetic gifts. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, it may not be great, it may not be that great, but you can make it to the league. That's just it. Like these American sports are highly dependent on athleticism and your natural gift. A lot of these American sports. So most of the time, if you do have it, if you are if you are born with it, you are fine. You are just fine. But unlike soccer, you, 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 you need skills. You need to do, to hone your skills. You need to actually be very, very skillful to make it as soccer. So I guess soccer is the ultimate sport because you can't just come in and come and oppress us with what God gave to you. You have to, you have to actually learn that shit and be good at it. Practice it. Play it so many years before you are good enough to even be able to make it in one of the top leagues. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.